Greetings. I'm so pleased as a Dane to be here in Denmark talking my shitty English to other Danish people. I really look forward to this. Now I hope what happens is that this moves to another slide. It really does. Um, uh, I'm a psychologist. So uh, for the next uh, 20 minutes I have planned that we'll be sharing a lot of our feelings with each other and perhaps doing some hugging. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay, you are? Okay, crap, because there's not going to be anything of that. I mean, I hate those exercises. They really make me uncomfortable. Actually, if I know that we're going to do something like, or if I suspect that, that, I, that I place I go and that we're going to do something like that, it can make me simply stay away. So uh, this is not what's going to happen now. I'm going to, yeah, but you are still free to talk about your feelings and do some hoggings afterwards over beer. Uh, I will encourage that. Um, I'm going to talk as a psychologist about the difference between writing something online to be read and writing something online to be shared. I think most of you know how to, uh, to explain your business and what you're doing in a way that's, uh, that's interesting to read. And perhaps you think that if you make it interesting enough to read, people will start sharing it. And if they don't share it, have you ever put something online that you hoped somebody would share, but they didn't? Of course you have. <laughs> so if you don't share it, you'll say, I must, must, must write something that's more interesting. I must, must make better content. My point is, no, you must make different content, and you must understand the mindset of people who share. These people are you. <coughs> you all have an intuitive understanding about why you share. It's not difficult for you to understand what you do. It's when you have to use it strategically in your business or tell other people about it, that it becomes very, very difficult to put words, to communicate internally and to work strategically with this sharing thing, the things that you intuitively do. I'll start giving you some information about me. I'm not called Anna's Colin Jensen. I can start with that. Uh, I'm called Anna's Colin Jensen. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> I think that's a good start. <laughs> I'm an internet psychologist. That's a real psychologist. I have a degree from Co University of Copenhagen in psychology. I'm an associated member uh, uh, of the Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies, which is in Danish called Institute for Francis Forsting. And I'm an extern lecturer, uh, lecturer at the IT University where I uh, teach media science. And here, <laughs> my own PowerPoint fell asleep on me. Why? Because normally that's not the way people present themselves with information in 2012. I do it here because I want to start making sure that all of you know what a really, really uh, clever and well-educated person I am. I think it will do, so, do me some good. Can you feel it? <laughs> but the way we normally communicate and tell about ourselves is like this. <laughs> we create online identities where we mix together uh, uh, information about what we do and where we work with the information about whether we're single or not and with pictures of our dinner. <laughs> but that's true. I'm going to talk about something that, in, I was inspired, uh, that I was inspired by a slide or a, a, a quote uh, from 2008. Uh, up to the, the 2008 uh, election, uh, New York Times set out to, to try to understand why, how do people seek information. They want to provide information to especially young people and try to find out how do they actually seek information. How can we make them come and seek information in our networks, on our products. And they were very, very discouraged by the result they found because, and it's summed up really, really brilliantly in this quote, from a focus group, because what the young people say, it wasn't giving a key to how they go to, why they go to websites. They said, uh, is this actually showing a full? Yeah. Okay, I'm not going back now. If this news is that, 
Okay, I'll never send something on a PC uh, to, to be shown on a Mac ever again. Thank you for that experience. <laughs> oh, it's going to work, he said. I'm sure. Or perhaps, unless something happens. Well, what this brilliant quote that I really built up to <laughs> says in reality is, if the news is that important, it will find me. If it's really important, it will find me. I won't go searching for news about your product. If it is important, the news will find me. That really made me think. And when I had this key, I started to see it everywhere. I started, for instance, I was, uh, um, I, uh, was involved with some librarians uh, where, where I found this video of a girl saying something like, most of the time, I get information thrown at me without having to actually do anything to get it. If I didn't have the key, I'll say, wow, that's a really, really lazy approach to information, <laughs> young person. You should really uh, sharpen up. But I understood that what she was saying is, she was telling how information about new stuff spreads in the world in 2012. She says, it just comes, and what she also says is, it means that since our time, our, our, our attention is limited, reading through all this stuff that people send us takes so much time that we have very little time to go to search for stuff. And sometimes if it's new, we don't, know, we go, no, don't, know, we don't go to Google to search for new stuff that we don't know anything about. So if you're well known, Google is really cool, but if not, the only really strong way to get known is to make people share your stuff so that she and other people experience it as finding her. So the way to get known is not expecting that if you write something on a website, people will go and find it. They won't. They will expect that if it's important, it will find them. I said, oh, that's really interesting. I get it. Uh, and I could have stopped there, but instead, as a psychology, psychology nerd, I started saying, thinking, okay, I get it, but I want to know more. I can see people sharing stuff, I can see other people finding it, but, but how does it work? What makes them do it? How does the engine of sharing work? What drives it? People sit there with their little uh, uh, um, uh, mice and they click, share. It's an active uh, action that people choose to do. What drives it? So I started to dig into finding out what drives our sharing. And what I found out is, is that a really important key to finding out what's happening is to see the way the internet has changed during the last five or six years. Six years ago, seven years ago, in the press, in the media, everywhere, when we talked about the internet, we talked about the internet as the anonymous place. It's the place where you can experience, you can play with your, your gender. It sounded wrong, but perhaps <laughs> where you can experiment with your with your gender, with your sex, where you can where you can be who you want on the internet. No one knows you're a dog. Remember that. Remember, it, it, they were ta everybody talked about it in the press. Everybody. It was the anonymous place. What happened to that? We haven't heard about that for the last five or six years. And what happened is, basically, Facebook killed it. Why is it Facebook that's big and not, for instance, uh, uh, MySpace or something else? That's a really important difference. On MySpace, it's the anonymous internet. This is where you log on via a cryptic name and you can't really find old school pals or anybody there. It's for making all these new acquaintances. What Facebook says is, in a society like ours, in a society like ours, people move around all the time and we want to keep in touch with all the weak ties, all the people where, that we knew. Soon, none of you are going to go to school together. How are you going to keep up? How do you keep up with the people you went to school to when you were kids? Before, those just vanished. Facebook says, said if we make a service where you can you are on with your real name where several people can actually be on with the same name people can find each other 
and we do, we did, it actually was and it started to become the way the internet worked. We started to put together our own personal internet works with people who know us, with people we know. And gradually what we do online started just becoming what we do. It's a part of our lives. But what's, how, why is that important to you? It's important because before in the anonymous internet, you can see the internet as a mail office where you send mail to each other, you, can, you send uh, information to each other. It was an a information distributing system where you send anonymous uh, uh, or you send uh, stuff to each other through these little channels. You can use the post office metaphor for understanding the old internet. But that doesn't cut it now. You cannot understand what's going on. You cannot understand why people share if you just look at the information being sent. So you, you need to stop talking about the information society because that metaphor is totally outplayed. The metaphor we need to use now is the arena. It is not a mail office. <coughs> now the internet for most of us is an arena. It is an arena what, what, where, what we do, especially if we do all these social platforms where sharing takes place, it's what we, where what we do is seen by other people. It is a place we play out our identi identity. It is a place that we show other people who we are. That's the new metaphor you need to work with. And you can understand that now, in this metaphor, in this reality, there are other things at play that actually the information value that of what you are sending around because when I send something around, it has to do with my identity. It tells the story about who I am. And that changes what I will send around. And it also makes a completely different game from information. So there's information I would want to read anonymously. But it is not the information that I would want to share. And if you start thinking information where people think <coughs> identity then you're simply not going to get the action that you're looking for. Normally, most of you think of communication on Facebook like this. This is your company in the middle, and you have all these Facebook fans you, start to, you need to start talking with. So you have this picture of you connecting to all these people on Facebook with, uh, uh, with, uh, with this channel where you can channel information to your fans when you get them gathered together. Of course, this is part, partly true. You can view it this way. And if you have all these fans, why shouldn't you? But you don't. So you need to start to understand how do people think this? And people think it totally the opposite. So you need, for, first of all, to understand in this new reality, even though you built this company, you have a really cool title and it's really cool, you worked a lot with it. But in this reality, you start with 100% irrelevance. You are not the center of anything anymore. Uh, actually, people are in the center. And they are not working with collecting companies and hooking up with companies. They don't give a shit about companies. They are connecting to images, brand value, identity symbols, things they can do, things they can use to tell who they are. You, st st you uh, here Friday, normally there's a shitload, shit stream it must be called, of uh, YouTube videos and stuff saying, oh, happy Friday, this and that. People share it. They don't even think it's commercial. They think, think about it. They simply say, I need to share this because I want to submit, uh, so to, to share some feelings with people. So people use commercial products all the time, but they use it to show who they are. A small test. Here's a Facebook profile. I have removed the uh, actually identity markers on it. I wanted to show, to ask, to answer me uh, two questions quickly. What is the age and what is the gender of this person who owns this Facebook profile? <laughs> the gender? Yeah. The age? Yeah. It's a young, middle-aged, or old? Yeah. Okay, a middle-aged man. What about this? It's also a middle-aged man, right? It's you. <laughs> it's me. Thank you. I am a middle-aged man. I'm 44. Yeah. Okay. A gay man. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. That's really funny. What do you think? Man or woman? woman. 
Old, young, middle-aged. Okay, so only, let's go back, the, the identity markers are totally identical. It's the same person because I made these up. So only by showing you some stuff that this person shared on Facebook, you just change the gender and cut off 20 years of their age? Could that be because the things we share online are really, really important for our identity and the way people view us? It's a rhetorical question. The correct answer is yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> this is ha what happens if you think information and try to put information in an environment where people think identity. This is my bedroom. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong in this picture? It is really good information. It's cheap chopped meat. I like meat. Why did my girlfriend say, hey, you crazy fuck, can you just get that picture taken so I can get that poster, poster down? Why did you do that? It was good information. It was because... <laughs> Our home is not information space, it is identity space. So you can ask yourself when you put out a poster for your company, would people hang this, this in their bedroom or in their living room where people come <coughs> and visit them? If not, why the fuck should they put it on Facebook? So you need to start in understanding that the key to making people share stuff is identity. Identity. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Identity economy is when things we do online may never conflict with the with our idea of who we are ourselves. If you're in a classic economy, we pay with purchasing power. We share purchasing power. You can buy this. Uh, I'll give you some uh, money so you can buy something else. And a currency right now is called Kona in Denmark still. In the identity economy, we pay with recognition. I recognize you, I see you, I like you, I recognize you. And it's not a narcissist thing. Everybody needs recognition. If you stop uh, laughing at my jokes, I would change them. Otherwise, we have a word for people who don't need recognition. They're called psychopaths. <laughs> Everybody else needs recognition. And in this recognition economy, <coughs> we have another currency. It's called like. <laughs> so why do people share stuff? They share it to get likes. They share it to be recognized. Or if they don't get recognized, they stop sharing it. What do you think would happen with picture sharing on Facebook if you remove the like button? We have a social filter. You know this company? Yes. Yeah? It makes uh, helping aids for uh, women with incontinence, incontinence problems. Uh, is it called that when you uh, piss your pants? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, but I didn't, I'm not, not sure about the, the word, and the last one I'm, I could hear that everybody understood. <laughs> this is a really good product. It was a product that helps women in the age of 40 and up, I think. Uh, uh, it's a really good product. They actually have a Facebook page. It's a million dollar for, uh, 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 company, a uh, billion dollar company. They have a Facebook page. It's in English, it's official, it's been there for a year. It's really good information about a product that's relevant for many people in the, our target group. How many fans do you think it has? <laughs> Why not? It's good information. <laughs> yeah, and one of them is uh, my friend Jonas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But why not? It's because who wants to be a fan of it? Yeah, I, I, I really piss my pants and I can't help it. Nobody wants. So this is why this is not going to work out in this identity. It's good information, but it doesn't pass the social filter. So if you don't get through the social filter, some people may read your information, but they will never share it. And what happens if they never share it? Lots of people never see it. We go and search for stuff that we know we need, but if you provide something that people don't search actively for, if it's new, if it's any good, it will find me. Oh, it didn't find me. It got stuck in the social filter. Mm -hmm. But again, the other way around, one of the most popular uh, apps on Facebook a few years ago was Pick Your Five. Pick Your Five is a service that actually lets you pick five things and share them on Facebook. Yeah, and then what, Anas? And then nothing. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> if you look at information as the key and information society and try to understand why this phenomenon uh, got uh, 24 million users a month, you will simply not understand it. It is like old people trying to understand why you share a picture of your dinner on Facebook. It doesn't make sense, but why must I know? Is there a recipe? No! 
But in the identity economy, it makes total sense. Of course, we want to tell who we are through our dinner, through our homemade sushi. All these nice thing, things. Remember this slide if you don't remember anything else. <laughs> I'm not mocking your mental capacity. I'm just being realistic. You've got a lot of information. This tells it all. Why does he share five movie titles? It's commercial titles. He doesn't get anything. Is this or, or is your full uh, movie collection? No, they're just some movies. What? They're really me. And he gets his like, he gets his reward down under saying, oh, all these movies are great. Are also, uh, they are also my favorites. Yes, the economy works. <laughs> when you go in and share something online, uh, on Facebook, you go in 15, 20 minutes later just to see uh, is the economy working? Is something you lie about it? Oh, I go check for some mails, but no, you're gonna see. Uh, is the like? Is the like for me? Yes, because that is the economy. And if there isn't, I put up a picture of myself in my new glasses. If never they had liked it, I'm really, I'm really, really hurt. You put when you put something out and get no likes, it hurts your feelings. You get sad. You don't have to laugh. It's true, and it's okay. You're not alone. <laughs> If you create great identity value, people will share your message to show who you are. And the best thing is, it won't mind at all that it's commercial. The limit is not between commercial messages or non-commercial messages. It's totally uninteresting. The limit, uh, the difference is, does it, how, how does it make me feel and look when I share this? How does it work together with my identity? So, go out with understanding, take a look at what you're offering, what you're putting out there, ask yourself, would I put this up in my own living room, and if not, throw it out and make something better. Thank you. Thank you.